Hey everyone, welcome to Motion Tutorials, where we go over weekly topics in VFX, motion graphics, and 3D animation. I am your host, Sean Frangella, and this week we'll be going over how to composite a 3D model into live action footage using Element 3D inside of After Effects. So here is our final render that we'll be working towards with this 3D kind of beam thing set up into this live shot of a background of Chicago, and we'll do this inside of After Effects using Video Copilot's Element 3D plugin, as well as go through the process of compositing color correction and all the little steps that make this stuff feel believable. And here is our project file inside of After Effects with all of this working if we play through real quickly. And what we got here is some original footage and then this 3D object, some rocks put back on top of it, a bunch of lighting to get our shadows, some cool little optical flares that are linked in the track, and then some overall color correction that really brings everything together. And if you're looking to get a hold of these project files and want to poke through them, you can do that by becoming a supporter of the show at patreon.com slash seanfrangelo. So if you want to dig into these project files or get additional benefits as a Patreon subscriber, be sure to check out that link. So we'll work towards this and let's get started right away. What I have in After Effects is just this quick clip of a camera moving in 3D space along these rocks on the west side of Chicago near this train that is just some cool dystopian looking rubble or whatever that sits by some train tracks. So to get started, I'll just drag this footage onto a new composition. And I have my composition already set up at 32 bits per channel in sRGB. And there are a lot of shortcuts in After Effects and Element 3D. So I do have this shortcut thing turned on for the bottom, which half the people that watch this really like and half of them complain about the mouse movement. But I'll just leave it on for this one because we're going to go through lots of shortcuts to try to do this as efficiently as possible. So we got our footage in a new composition and what I'm going to do first of all is track this camera and I can do that by going to effects and I'll type in 3D camera and that's going to bring up my 3D camera tracker effect and I'll drag this onto my footage and what that's going to do is track our camera in 3D space and that'll run for a minute in the background and do a pretty good job and we'll just watch this tracking, tracking, tracking and waiting. And after a minute, this will finish up. And if we scrub through, we can see that there's tons of little track points that show up. And in our effect over here, we can actually turn up that track point size. So those are a bit bigger and we can see what we're looking at. And so this is a pretty even lit shot. We get a pretty good track and we don't really have any problems with the parts we want to add stuff into around this ground and these rocks. Now, if there were problems, there's a lot of little adjustments we could make on our 3D camera tracker and all sorts of workflows. But since this one works fine and I want to use it for that reason, we can start there. So what we want to do first after we have our track, is you can see if we go in between multiple points, we get this little target and we can turn that up too, just to make it bigger. And we want to come up with a plane in 3D space that represents the perspective of our ground. So I can just keep moving that until I find three points that work pretty well. And those look pretty aligned with my ground plane. And what I want to do first is right click on these points and go to set ground plane and origin. And it won't look like it does anything. But what that's doing is resetting the 000, 000 point in After Effects to right here. So if we add anything, it's going to show up right here. And then what we want to do is take these three nulls and maybe a few more just for reference and do right click. And I'm going to do create five solids or nulls in camera and I'll do solids just for reference. And what that's going to do is create a 3D camera down here, create five of those track solids that will align to those points. And if I press S, I can scale those up a bit. And then I can get a pretty good reference as I scrub through if those points are sticking and it looks like they are. And that's a really important step to make sure that this track is working and all this is locking on. If these were floating around in space, we'd have some problems and we'd need to do some tweaking to get it to work right. So I know it's working. I just made those five solids for reference. I can delete those. I'll go back to my footage, grab my camera track, and that'll pop my track points back up. And then I'll just, because I like organization and to have some reference, I'll just create a couple nulls from these points. I probably won't need them, but it's good to have it in there. So I'll just create three nulls. And now that we have our scene tracked and our camera set up, we can get into Element 3D and setting this up. So what I'll do to get that in is make a new solid. And that's what Element 3D sits on. So I'll just call this E3D, but it doesn't exactly matter what it's called. It just matters that it's the same size as the comp. Go to OK. And then in my effects, I'll type in Element. And this is Element 3D by Video Copilot, which is a paid 3D plugin for After Effects, but it does a great job 
of compositing 3D objects into the After Effects workflow, and I'll drop that onto this solid, and that's gonna drop this effect onto there and replace the solid. And this is where I can add my 3D objects. So to pop an element as the effect, I'll go to Scene Setup over here, and that's gonna open up my Element 3D workflow. And I could drop in any objects to composite in here, like this Create Primitives or anything. And by the way, I'm in Element 3D version two, which is super important because it's the most recent version at this time and the buttons are pretty new and different. So if I wanna create that kind of spacey looking thing I got here. What's nice is there's some presets in here on some of these packs and I built this using this motion design two pack. And for that main shape, I use this components and I grabbed component five, which is kind of this circular looking thing. And then those center points, I grabbed this mech one and these are just lots of little parts and shapes. So I can grab mech 11 and you can see that drops into place and is this kind of robotic looking thing and I can rotate that around 90 degrees and just scale that down T as a shortcut and just move that into place and lock that in and they all kind of align pretty nicely and then I can use some cool new shortcuts in this version to make copies of this all under group one so I'll grab this up arrow and hold option or alt and drag up and that's going to make a copy here and now I have two of these and I can even make a third one if I wanted by holding option again, dragging up. Now we have this tall little structure here. And if I go to OK, now we can see that this is going to be dropped into our scene somewhere, but it's really small and too small to even see. You can see it's kind of right there, but that is tiny. So what we can do to scale that up is go into group one where that is located, and I'll twirl down particle look. And since this is all one group, we can just scale this way up. And if I hold shift, it's going to increase how quickly that scales. And then I can go to particle replicator and I'll just move this back in X, Y, and Z space and get it into my scene. And then if I press zero to Ram preview, we can see that this is locking on and moving along and it looks really sharp and not quite blended in yet. And we'll keep fixing that. And one thing that will really help with that part is if we turn on motion blur and check on motion blur for this E3D layer and RAM preview again, it's going to be locking and you can see that we're already kind of getting there. It's already locking on and tracking and moving correctly inside of our 3D scene, but we still got a lot to do. We want it to actually look believable, not just track, unless that was the only reason you look this up, but stick with me. We're gonna keep making this look real and believable with lots of additional tips. So let's keep going. So this tracks along, but if we check our final result, this is a lot different. We have a lot more work to do. So let's keep going. The first thing we would wanna do is get our lighting and color correction of this set up so it feels like it's actually blending in here. So this shot is a little blue and it's a little daylight, but this object is very flatly lit and it's very sharp and that's not very realistic. So we need to do some color correction as well as tweak some lighting effects on our Element 3D effects. So the first thing we could do is grab curves on top of our Element 3D effect and we'll just pull this black point up a little bit because we can see that all this looks a little flat and hazy. And then we can go grab the blue channel and we'll just push this a little so it feels like it's getting a little bit of that blue cast that we're getting from this clear sky. And we can see it's a very subtle thing but that definitely helps it feel like it's blending in. The other part is since this is footage, it has a little bit of noise and blur to it. Even though it's subtle and this is very much in focus, we'd wanna add a little bit of that back in so it feels like it's part of this footage. So what we can do is go to our effects and grab a blur effect like fast blur. And I'll drop that on and we'll grab a very subtle amount of this, which we can do by holding command and not that far, but you can kind of get the idea of if we add a little bit of it under 1%. Again, very subtle but it helps to blend this in if we zoom in and turn this up a little bit as if it was actually shot by this camera. And the other thing is noise. We want to add a little bit of noise in that we would see on that video footage. And again, if we go way up, it's way too far, but if we add just a little bit of it, it's going to help make it feel like it's actually a part of this video. Now, the next thing we should tackle is our lighting and reflections of this. And this is one of the great new features of Element 3D V2 is we can actually get some more realistic reflections and lighting in addition to lighting with HDRI images. So what I'm going to do on my effect is go to scene setup. And if I want to check on environment, I can see what the HDRI reflections are adding. And this is just the default. 
So what we could do with this additional backlight pack, if you've got that, is go to backlight, backlight environments, and click through these and find something that is close to matching the tone of our scene. Now you could shoot your own HDR image, but there's lots of these and they're very useful for this sort of thing. So I'll go with this one. And then if I go to OK, you can see how that very differently changed the look of that. And now if I go to my render settings, I can twirl down physical environment, rotate environment, and I can shift this around a bit and you can see how quickly it updates live so that we get the highlights coming from where the sun would be. Now there's lots of extra settings that we could change for our lighting to get this more realistic. If we go to all of these render settings and we're going to want to add lighting, shadows, and ambient occlusion over here. So let's just start from the top. We'll go to lighting and what we can do is add some additional lighting with these built-in settings. And without having to add After Effects lights, these will give us some additional light options. And if I scroll through these, you can kind of get the idea of how this is changing the look of this. And I'll go to this clean blue because it adds a little bit of extra lighting that matches my scene a bit. So now I need this to actually be sitting on this ground to get shadows and ambient occlusion. So the way I can do that is if I go back into scene setup, I need this to be sitting on a ground plane, but only see the shadows that it's creating. So if I go to create and grab this plane shape, and I'll just drag this down, what I can do is scale this up and then I'll grab all of my other components and sit them right on top of this ground and I can orbit around to make sure they're sitting right on top of it. And then for my plane, I can twirl down the texture and under settings for the texture, I'm going to want to check matte shadow. And what this will do is hide the object, but allow it to still catch shadows. And to show that if I go to OK, again, it doesn't look like anything really happened besides the object moving up. But now if I go to my shadows, as well as my ambient occlusion, if I check that on and change this to ray traced and zoom in a bit here, now you can see if I turn this on and off, we're starting to get that little bit of shadow. And to get the actual shadows casting that are going to fall onto that plane, we need to make some lights in After Effects and that will cast that. So what I can do is go to Layer, New, Light, and I'll use a spotlight and I'll grab like a lightish blue color so we get that same sort of sky blue that we have here and make sure Cast Shadows is checked on. And then I can grab this light and move it up in my scene, drag it over and press R to rotate it towards my object and point it down to where the sun would be. And then if I go to my E3D layer and go to shadows and check on enable and also change this to ray trace. Now you can see right there, we're starting to get our shadow based on our light. And then what we want to do is position this light kind of where the sun is coming from. So it'll cast the shadows in the right way. And we can get an idea from that by this nice shadow from this giant block thing. So we just move this up and we'll drag it over here and then press R to grab rotation. And we can just orient this pointing from the sun. And then to get those shadows to cast, if we go to our E3D layer and check on Enable under Shadows and change this from Shadow Mapping to Ray Traced, that'll give us this accurate shadow that we can see here. And then we just need to grab our light and move it back in space. And this axis got kind of out of whack because of rotating it. So what I can do is grab my World Axis Mode up here, and that'll give me my X, Y, Z straight on. And I'll just push this back in Z space until we can see that that shadow is being pushed more along the line here. We can see that shadow that's being casted and some highlights that we're getting here. And we can always push those shadows a bit further with some later steps. And now I can see that this is a little too dark still. So I can go back to my curves on this layer and I'll just pull this black point up even a bit more and pull this contrast up so that it really feels like it's fitting into the contrast of this shot. All right, so if we ramp preview a little bit of this, now we can see that this model sticking on. It looks like it's getting there with the lighting. We're getting a bit of a shadow and our main things to make it feel like it's actually in there now are getting our overall color grading set up, which will give it a nice little look and feel getting those 3d lights pinned on as well as pushing the shadow and ambient occlusion. So it feels a little more believable. So let's start with our overall color grading. I'll do that on a new adjustment layer and I can press enter and rename this CC for color correction. And then I'll just grab curves. And we'll just do a little bit of a basic 
color grade, but what we can do on this adjustment layer is push the contrast of all the pieces below overall on RGB first, and that's gonna blend everything together. And then I can give it a little bit of a tone by changing the red, green, and blue separately. So if I want this kind of bleach bypass look like we have here, I can go to a red, and I'll push that midpoint up a little, and I'll do the same thing with green, push that up a little on the high ends, and then I'll grab blue, and I can just pull that down a bit. And then we get this nice color grade and it blends down to everything else. Now we could add a vignette on this also, which add a nice little additional video effect to this. So if I go to layer, new, and again, adjustment layer, I'll press enter and call this vignette. And the quickest, fastest way to make a vignette is if we grab curves. Again, I'll just drag this pretty far down so it looks mostly darker but then I can grab this ellipse tool and double click and that makes a mask. And then I can invert the mask and press F for feather and drag this up and take the opacity down a bit. And then look at that, we have a nice little vignette effect on our footage that's making it feel a lot more cinematic in only a couple extra steps. So now to really make this feel like it's blended in, we need to get those lights on and we need to add some rocks back in and we need to get our shadows working a little better. So let's tweak those shadows and ambient occlusion first. Way we can do that is if we go to our element 3D effect and go down to output, we can see that we have a lot of render settings and we have a lot of options in this multi-pass mixer. And that's where we can actually turn up our shadows quite a bit and that's gonna darken it. And if we wanna go further, we could actually just duplicate these lights a couple times. And we can see that now we're getting a little bit more shadow. And if this is a little too harsh on these lights, we can press AA and change our shadow diffusion to something bigger like 50. And I'll do the same thing for the second one, as well as if we change the cone feather. And another thing I can do is go back in my scene setup and on that plane that's catching this under settings, we have AO amount, we can turn this up more than one. So if we go to like four, we're gonna see that we get a lot darker ambient occlusion. And that's great, that's gonna help make it feel believable. Let's drop those optical flares onto it cause that'll be a fun little thing. So the way we can do that is we'll make a new solid for our optical flares right below our color correction. So we'll go layer new solid and I'll call this flares. And then same thing in effects, I'll type in optical and this will give us our optical flares plugin by Video Copilot also. And I wanna set up this cool little light I saw, so I'll go to Options, Pro Presets, and I really like this Future Green, it's a cool little one. And I wanna turn off some of these options and shapes, I don't need all that. So for a lot of these, I can just check it off because I don't want all these extra little lens effects. So I'll just go through and turn those off and get rid of this little thing. And then I end up with this, and I'll go to OK. Now, what I need to do is change this render mode to on transparent. And I want this effect to lock onto these little pins in three different locations. So what I can do to connect all this is if I change my positioning mode from source type to track lights, and that's gonna track all my lights. I don't want that. What I can do is change it to name starts with something. So I'll go to A and that's gonna turn that off. And then I'll make a new light. I'll go layer new light and go to point and change this to kind of a warm color and rename it a space light and that's going to create a flare from that and if i turn that light intensity up a bit we can see that shows up right there and i can hide my extras with shift command or control h which is one of the great after effects shortcuts but now we need to snap this to exactly these couple pins and a great little shortcut we can use to do that is on our E3D layer in the effect under utilities, I can go to select generate 3D position and I'll click select 2D position and just click wherever I want that and it's gonna map that onto this 3D piece. So I'll just click right here and I'll go generate 3D null and that's gonna create this 3D null and what I can do is take that light I just made and hold shift while I'm parenting it and parent it to that position. And that's gonna parent it and snap it to right there. And we can see now that optical flare lines up exactly there. And since I already have that one there on that light, I can just duplicate that light once, drag this one down to the next little beam. 
Maybe turn the opacity down a little so it's not exactly the same and move it down a little to get it right here on that little light opening. And then I'll make another copy of that with Command D to duplicate. And I'll turn this opacity back up a little higher than all of them just to keep it varied. And then I'll pull that one down to this next beam. And now if I press zero to do a quick RAM preview of our whole scene, now we can see that those flares are locking in and everything is smoothing along nicely and we're getting pretty close here. The last couple things we'd want to do is add some rocks back into this and turn up our render settings so everything looks really crisp at the end. So if this was really sitting in here, we'd see some rocks popping up against it and it really looks like it's sitting on this flat plane. So what we want to do is add some of these rocks from this original shot back in. And the way that we can do that is just pull these straight from this video clip and grab a still frame of it. So what I'll do is duplicate this original footage on a frame that looks good for these rocks. Pull this above my E3D layer, take the opacity down so I can see through to that, and then I'll zoom in. And what I wanna do is draw a mask with my pen tool around just some of these rocks that would be covering up this little bit. And just draw this along the edge. And then just drag to grab a little slice of this. Now, if I turn the opacity back up, I have a little slice of these rocks that can sit in front of it. And what I can do to make this a 3D layer that follows along with this is make this a still frame first. So I'll right click and go to time freeze frame. And that's gonna keep a still frame of just this little clip of the rock. And then I'll make this a 3D layer and it'll probably go off in rotation and that's fine. I can just use that track null I created earlier and take my footage, which I'll recall rocks and shift parent it to that track null and that's gonna snap it into place. And then I can press AA on my rocks and down here there's accept lights and shadows and I'll turn that off because I don't want them to get hit by lights. And then I can just use rotation with R and position so that I can scale these rocks back up and position them back on top of my footage. Now it looks a little sharp and you can see a little seam here. So what I can do with these rocks is press F for feather of our mask. And I'll just put that at a couple and that's gonna blend this bottom part in nicely. And if we still wanna cut that off a bit, we could grab another mask with our ellipse and I'll drag that out. And then I'll make this mask subtract. So it's gonna cut that out. And then I'll press F for this one and turn our feathering up pretty high. And then I can just move this one down just to blend to that bottom edge. So now if we zoom out, we have some nice rocks that are sitting in front of this, but they look a little flat and we need a little bit of that shading on it. So one little trick we can do to create some ambient occlusion and shadows from this is I'll duplicate my whole rocks layer, move that below my rocks, and then I'll just push it up a couple pixels with pressing the up key. And then I'll grab the fill effect and I'll make this completely black with fill and change that to black. And now if we turn that on and off, we can see it's a little bit of shading. And so if I pull that up, just a little bit and then add a fast blur to it which i'll do by grabbing fast blur put this at like 15. now if i take the opacity of that down quite a bit maybe to like half and i'll recall this shadow we can see that that adds a nice little bit of shading that's created from these rocks sitting right in front of this. So now that extra little step and all these little extra little lighting steps really make it to feel like this thing is composited. Now if we do a RAM preview of this, we can see that we got our 3D object tracking and sitting inside of this live action footage using After Effects and Element 3D and all these little steps that we're adding to create the lighting, the color correction, these rocks back, the shadows, all are really important to really make it feel like it's believable and shot with the same camera. So this was a very thorough one. This was a fun one to put together from start to finish of basically a full shot of 3D compositing. And if you want to get a hold of these project files, you can support the show at patreon.com slash seanfrangella, where you can get all sorts of project files, participate in Google Hangout Q and A's, as well as all sorts of other bonus benefits. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you
see you at the next video.